For the first time in North America, Japanese auto giant Toyota partners with General Motors to form a groundbreaking joint venture, merging cultures and philosophies to form the new United Manufacturing Motors Incorporated, also known as NUMI. Born and raised in Fremont, I was here when the General Motors plant was here. And, uh, you know, my CYO basketball coach, coach was at General Motors. Uh, friends at school, their, their dads and moms worked at General Motors. And when that plant shut down, it, it, hurt, it hurt the city. It was, it was, it was a blow. Uh, and then just a few years later, Numi came back. And Numi came back with a, a joint venture between General Motors and Toyota and brought a lot of those same people that lost their job back to work. It was... Um signature to the community, you know, it was, it was part of the city of Fremont's branding. Um, that when, when, you, when you spoke about what Fremont, California was about, one of the first things you talked about was NUMI. You talked about its, its diversity, you know, its ethnic diversity. Uh, you talked about its um, social acceptance and um, how, um, in, how much in harmony people live together. You speak about its green hills, but I think you know, above and beyond all of that, I think one of the first things you talked about was NUMI. Uh, an efficient uh, plant, uh, a high quality plant. The product they turned out was something that was high quality. And for both the city of Fremont, our region, and the state of California, it had significant implications for employment, uh, especially relative to the Port of Oakland. The combination of the 5,000 jobs at NUMI uh, and the, the jobs that emanated from that which tended to be somewhere in the order of 30,000 jobs had significant implications for our economy uh, in the region, the state of California, and especially the Port of Oakland. So for us, we looked upon it as an absolutely positive experience um, uh, and was one that we hope would last for a long, long time. NUMI has always been known for its great products and excellent track record. NUMI is the largest manufacturing plant in California employing approximately 4,000 full-time and part-time employees, pumping out almost 6,000 vehicles every week. I faxed them every day for a month. Every day for a month. They would send you these little yellow cards, and, oh, we have your resume on file, we'll keep you in mind. No, that's not good enough. You will hire me. <laughs> so um, after about 15 cards, they called me and I got an interview and, and got in. I started out as a team member and then um, two years later I became a team leader and two years later I became a supervisor. I needed full-time employment. Kaiser was part-time. I ran into a neighbor. He told me about NUMI. Um, so I went ahead, um, drove out there, filled out the application form. I, you know, they called me up and the process started at that point. Uh, financially, it was good. I mean, it allowed me to do a lot for my family. When the, when the economy started to change and we saw uh, the tremendous hit that, you know, obviously the, the, whole, the real estate market did, but it went along with, the, the, with car sales. We saw, you know, who would have ever thought companies like General Motors were on the verge of basically not going to be in existence. There was a general mood in the city of, of concern about uh, a, what was going to happen to Newey, but B, what was going to happen to those, um, those, those jobs here in Fremont? There were, there were some early signs that there were perhaps some trouble for the future viability of the plant. Those signs included the fact that they had a, a manufacturing facility that was going to be opened on the, uh, on the East Coast, and we're looking at some different types of uh, um, production facilities in other states that were perhaps uh, right-to-work states where they didn't have the labor laws that we do here in California. In Mexico, they had, as we understood it, uh, some potential manufacturing going on down there. Uh, employees were running around the building saying this and saying that. And when we questioned management about it, management would say, no, the company is not going on there. They were basically trying to call, call Numi's bluff or you're not gonna close down, it's just a scare tactic. That's what we were hearing, you know, from our team members, that oh, it's a scare tactic, and they told us don't worry about it, but when it came down to it and it was time to close, they didn't have anything to say. We had heard rumors, I don't know that we really uh, understood that Numi was slowing down, but, um, you know, it didn't take a, a, an economist to figure out that if America's in trouble and our economy's in trouble, um, our more vulnerable industries are going to be um, um, 
very, very troubled. And, and so that would lend itself to the theory that General Motors might be in trouble. So we had heard some rumors, uh, but it was pretty dramatic because they just announced, in essence, that they would be closing the factory in, and I can't remember the number of days, you know, 60 days or 90 days, whatever it was. Uh, and so that mood became very, very dark. We all know the economy is, was going downhill. We kind of seen a, we kind of seen the fall before it happened. You know, I didn't really believe it. But. The white paper that was released uh, showed that Numi was feasible from a dollars and cents standpoint. And uh, it, it became clear that no matter what information was provided, Toyota didn't want to be part of that. And I think that that was their decision. It was a business decision. One of the faults of government is we don't work well together sometimes, city, county, state, and federal. But this is a situation that everyone put all their differences aside and said, hey, what can we do to save this? This is not just a big deal for Fremont, but for the state, the region, and the, and the country. Because that's the only way that you can make a plant like that survive, is that either one, you have to cut labor costs, or you have to really invest in the plant to make it so productive that you can pay those same labor costs. Well, they weren't gonna cut labor costs. That was not gonna happen. Um, and they were not willing or able to invest in the plant. A multinational corporation like Toyota doesn't make an announcement like that and then say, oh, never mind, we're gonna, we're gonna change our minds. When my coworkers, they, you know, they would be talking about it, they were running around with some kind of hope that, you know what, this company wasn't going anywhere. I was telling them, be prepared because it was just a matter of time it was coming. Attaching taillights to Toyota Tacoma trucks will soon be a thing of the past at Fremont's Numi plant. Like a bad joke, only real. April 1st will be the auto plant's last day. And when the doors close, these workers will join the ranks of the nation's unemployed. Here is the domino effect that will result from Numi's closure. Approximately 3,700 jobs will be lost at Numi, 387 at Inkjet Industries in Hayward, 321 at Johnson Controls in Livermore, 186 at Trim Masters in Modesto, 154 at Kyoho in Stockton, and another 104 at Toyota Two Show in Fremont. In all, 1,300 workers who don't work for Numi will lose their jobs. On April 1st, 2010, saying the final farewell to my team members really hurt me deeply. I have been working really close with these people for the last four years. They were family. And to walk them across the plant, out the door, I felt like I was walking a death row inmate and it hurt me so bad, I will never forget that. I had a lot of men in my group that I supervised. And so, you know, men try to hide their emotions and, and be strong, but you could see, you could see in their eyes that they were hurt, and I was hurt for them. Coming into work was a real shock. I mean, I kind of sat in the parking lot for a while thinking, wow, this is it, I'm done. I have 18 years. It's over. And it's still, it's still shocking to me now because it would be almost 20 years I've been there. You know, I'll be ready to retire pretty soon, but now I can't. The, the plan closed. You know, Numi went for what 20, almost 25 years, and, and it looked like I was going to retire then. And you know, they dropped the bomb on us, and it was a reality check. You know, things happened. You know, and it did. You know, I never thought that they would come with. They would just shut the plant completely. Always, I always had hope. You know, I always thought that you know something would come up and the, the plant would keep running. I still have a job and I go to work eight, eight, ten hours a day. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. I was sad in a lot of ways because I knew that my means, you know, for providing for my family was getting you know, swept, you know, was getting taken away from me. Um, that day was it was a little emotional for me. I went to work. Um, greeted co-workers and going through the, you know, going through that, that final um, uh, processing, knowing that at the end, that was it. It was, it was kind of heavy. A lot of people were sad.
while Congress was busy bailing out the U.S. auto industry, Numi was abandoned by General Motors as part of the government's restructuring plan. The most visible impact to me is when you drive down 880 and there was no sign on the front of there that said Numi. Welcome to New United Motors Manufacturing Industry. When that sign was taken off, that was the final, final for me at least, that it's like, wow, it really is going. Because I, you know, maybe I'm optimistic, maybe I, I don't know, but I always thought that there was going to be some kind of last minute effort that brought it back. It's unfortunate in the sense that I, I really do believe that had we been a, bit, a little bit more proactive working with um, Toyota uh, especially, uh, you know, GM had its own issues as did Ford and Chrysler and, and they really had to, to, to recast their model. But, you know, Toyota, I think we had an opportunity to perhaps do something a little bit different there. So as I drive past, yeah, in some senses, I look at it as a missed opportunity. You look at how they disposed of the land. It, it was basically a fire sale. They, they sold uh, the Numi land and factory almost like you or I would sell a used car. It was just a oh, yeah, I don't want to hassle with it, I just want to get rid of it basically. They didn't really, um, I think, spend the time to market it as well as they could or they didn't. Uh, holding it would have produced a you know, they, they sold it at probably a, one of the, the lowest spots in the market. It was, it was something they just wanted to walk away from completely. So where's the, where's the faith in the U.S. system? What are we to do? Where are we to turn? We don't know what to do. Devastated and forgotten, NUMI workers are now left with the daunting task of starting over in a struggling economy. You know, it, it, the tragedy part about it is a lot of people were really strung out, you know, and, and, and hardship, you know, but there's people, you know, that live day to day and struggle, you know, and I'm one of them. I, you know, I, you know, I, I lost my house, okay, you know, but I, I lived on, you know, I keep moving. There's people that just gave up. You know, they took their self, you know, you read about in the paper all the time. It's sad, you know, because life goes on, you shouldn't give up. Just keep moving on. Losing my job in Numi took a toll on me that you could not believe. Um, I lost property and my job all in the same year. So I was devastated and still haven't, I still have not overcame it. I'm struggling every day. I'm a full-time student and I've, not being in school after 25 years is taking a toll on me also. I've been working, got laid off recently, but this company is supposed to call me back. Um, it's not the type of work I like, but it's a good paying job close to home, and um, I got that right now to fall on. I knew what I wanted to do when Numi closed down. I knew that I wanted to go back to school, and um, I'm, I'm doing it, and I'm loving it. The Numi experience is a prominent example of the kind of labor going the way of the dinosaur. Such factory jobs used to support entire communities. Now the empty Numi plant is a constant reminder of better economic times for its former employees. But the sense of family that many felt at the workplace gives them comfort as they continue to pull their lives together.